You're listening to Artie Tune, a podcast with artists created and produced by Detlef Schlick, a visual artist and ritual designer, living and loving in West Cork, and best known for his essay about the cause and effect of shamanism, art and digital culture. Working in the field of performance, photography, painting, sound, installations, and film he will dive and discover with us and a weekly creative guest into the unknown and exciting deep ocean of the creative mind. This is Detlef Schlich and today we dive into the uh, deep and exciting unknown uh, um, ocean of the creative mind together with Matt Dina. Um, that's quite interesting and funny. And uh, um, a friend of mine, he, uh, he he mentioned Matt, who is a musician, and he's, he said because Matt is the the grandson of Tommy O'Connell. And, uh, Tommy O'Connell grew up um, in what is now O'Sullivan's shop in Skibbereen at the Main Street in Skibbereen. So that's actually the link between. Uh, between Matt and somehow, uh, as well, I love a West Cork artist member and, uh, and attitude. So Matt's grandfather, great grandfather, actually, uh, he passed away in 1935 already. So we speak about almost not a decade. Uh, we speak actually about almost a, a century, which is amazing. Hi, Matt. Great to have you in this show. Hi, Dedlev. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. So uh, I must say to the listeners, uh, hello, first of all, the listeners, this is a special one as well. Matt, Matt is a musician and probably more as well, which, which I will discover during, during the talk because I don't know much about him as well. What I know is uh, he and his band, they, they uh, created an, an, an album. Uh, well, the album is called The Big Sip, which is uh, the same as the name of our band. Yeah, The Big Sip, right. So, and, and uh, what we're going to do at the end of this, this, this episode, we're going to play the song Fools of Life, which is a song which I really, really like. And uh, I really, I must say, Matt, um, it's, it's a great song, first of all. And I promise that, 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 that you and your band, if, if you really make it to stay together for a longer time, that you that you really get it in, in, into the top ten. That would be that would be pretty amazing. You know, I can only we can only hope. I mean, uh, it is it is really this this this, this song is uh, very, for me it's very unique. It's 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 great. I think you find a great mix between jazz and and, and pop, uh, and and avant garde as well. You know. Um, Plus your your voice your voice reminds me from 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 the singer of Jackson Jackson maybe you know him it's it's a it's an Australian band. Oh, what's the band called? Jackson Jackson Jackson. Jackson, Jackson. Yes, you might listen to it. I mean, you 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 probably it's 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 as well your 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 house number. They do gonna do great songs as well, and it's very danceable and and um very unique. I mean. They they start with ska and then they they, they they went to new wave and and then a mix between between um, uh, electronic dance music but very good already in in the, in, the, in the, around 2000, 2010 or maybe earlier Jackson Jackson great band and the singer has has the voice is really cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm really glad to hear you like the song and um, I don't know. We kind of took some risks with this new album that we hadn't taken on our past releases. Um, and we, we really made an effort to focus a lot on uh, producing it professionally and having um, you know that attention to detail and creating a finished product, whereas uh, our previous uh, EPs were more about our playing our instruments in a live setting. And we would, we would just record the band, and, and for the most part, that was what the audience would hear but but for this album there was a lot of stuff added 
in in post production to really spice up the listening experience. So, um, you know, there's a string arrangement that we're really proud of yeah. on Fruits of Life specifically, and uh, obviously we experimented with adding the um, the uh, voiceover to it as well. You know, the um, mm. there's an artist, uh, Sun Ra is the artist who's speaking. Uh, I was on wondering the track. who was speaking the the. the um the part yes so yeah it's a transcript of of an interview with an american jazz musician named sun ra who's this like extremely eclectic um free jazz band leader but it was really fortunate because because my bandmate picked out that audio recording but okay. then when we paired it when we paired it with the instrumental it sounded almost like it belonged to be there like as far as the rhythm of his speech, like fit perfectly with what we were playing. And yeah. so that was something that was like basically completely unplanned that just ended up yeah. working out really well. Yeah. Okay. So this is the original of what, 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 what we hear in, in the song or, or did, did, did your, your, the writer of the song, um, uh, mirror it, copy it. Literally, we had already written that instrumental part, and then we just added his, um, you know, his interview transcript in, and and okay. it just like fit so well for some reason. Like we didn't even have to adjust anything. Okay, so it's, um, so it's it original, so lucky. original voice of 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 what's what's the, of Ra. His name is Sun Ra. Yes, uh, Sun like the sun. Uh, okay, because I was wondering um, um, that. Um, To, to, as, as I was listening to the song, uh, it was mirroring somehow the glitch in, in which we are now. Somehow, I thought so. That was my impression. I see what you mean, like like the themes of of the pandemic in the song. Yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm sure, sure. I mean that that re relates to everything like this and the fruits of life. They they, they bring somehow back um, and the, the main and the idea of, of living in order to avoid that that we're getting pressed and whatever. This is I would agree with that interpretation of it. So 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 that was that was and I mean I was listening actually to the. To the lyrics today, um, the first time. So, but that, that was, I mean, as, as I was listening to the song the first time, I was a couple of weeks ago as Reddy. Reddy is, is, is a relative of you, the cousin of Reddy, aren't you? I think we're first cousins once removed or something. I forget what the exact <laughs> relation is. So, how many, how many relatives do you have? Oh, I have quite a few on my, I mean, my mom's side is my, is the Irish side. And, um, I don't know, I, I haven't been to Ireland since I was about one years old. And so, um, I really, uh, don't, rem I think I met a lot of my Irish relatives in, in West Cork at that time, but I don't really remember, um, as, as, as what it was me. like, but. Okay. So, so you excused me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you're Irish American, aren't you? Yes, I'm half Irish and then half uh, Jewish, actually, on my dad's side. You're, so your dad is Swedish. Yes. Is it practicing? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. So I was half Catholic and half Jewish. So I was raised as as nothing, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Same like me. I mean, my mother was Protestant and my father was Catholic, but. But I must say though that, that my mother, she, as five years before she passed away, she bought the huge New Testament Bible in gold gold letters for one thousand five hundred euro or something like this, you know, because a door knocker came and he sold it to her, you know, and she she had to pay pay back the, the last five years. <laughs> so so she was probably very Protestant. I don't know. Um, so, right, so where, where are you living? In? I live in Vermont, USA right now. I live in Burlington, Vermont. So is it uh, in the city or more or countryside? Um, I guess you could call it a city. It's the largest, uh, like urban area in the state, but, uh, Vermont is like the least populated state in America or the second least. And so, um. 
it's a very rural area with a lot of mountains and um, the second you know, ski season will be coming up. All right, the second soon. least populated state in America. Six hundred thousand people in Vermont. Wow, that is that quite is, small. That's very small. That's that's less actually in, as in Cologne. Really? Yeah, Cologne has one million, but in one but, city. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it, Cologne, it's good because it is. It is a city, but but you can can have really a, a feeling is more like you you, you live in in a, in a smaller town you know, often. So it's it's not like you have Frankfurt and Munich and and, and they are they they pulse the pulse is far far much faster because Frankfurt is is a very uh, um, money based town city you know so Cologne is more they love the Kölner Carnival that's 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 everyone is dressed some some somehow up once a year and and they have a big party so that's nice too. So, but Vermont, six hundred. This West Cork has forty thousand just. Ah, uh, that's more like it. That's more like the town where I went to college uh, and the town where I grew up. Um, you know, I'm I'm mostly from small towns. Uh, so, so you you grew up in a, in a, in a forty thousand forty thousand population town. Yes, I grew up in Ohio, actually. And then I'm living in Vermont because I went to college uh, in state, in this state. Uh, okay. So, so some of my friends live in town here. Uh, as well. No. Yes. Uh, and right. So I don't know. My identity has taken on more of a Vermonter yeah? type thing since I've come here. Uh, and that's where the big sip started. Um, I met my my bandmates at college and so all pretty right. much on the first night. All right. So so what 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 are you going to study? Um well I'm graduated now but I studied um computer science. All right. Uh so like writing code which is what I do for work at this point. It's my day job. Okay. So I mean that's that's quite interesting because I thought that that's one song already reminded me a little bit from okay okay computer. Computer radio had, but just as, uh -huh. as uh, actually it was, it was I, I wrote down I think I think it was a uh, um, what was it what it's smirk it's ah uh, yes it's, it's, it's pa paranoid Android somehow I mean but really they were very, very far you know. I know what you mean though, uh, especially the section at the end yeah. where where we have the the vocals with the effect on them. Um, yeah, yeah. That's one of my favorite sections of the album and, and definitely emulating the sound of, of Tom York, for sure. <laughs> that's, that's cool. So, so do you think that, 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 your, that your job somehow influenced your, your, your music as well? Well, um, it, there's a lot you can do with music and and writing code you know there's a lot of computer programs that musicians use and people who produce music use and now and so it is obviously you know yeah um i mean the one thing i think about most that i would like to do with coding i mean obviously you can you can write code and then uh and then there's different libraries that can convert that to music or you can write lines of code that are producing music but um I don't know. I haven't. I've never been super interested in that kind of thing. But as far as for for uh, training as a musician, I think there's a lot of potential uses for mm. for computers, like helping people to learn. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now back to the show. Different notes that go in different chords, or I'm really into that kind of stuff, like music education. And so, um, specifically, I would want to make an app that that would help people to train their ears to recognize notes as they hear them. Um, that's wow. something that I practice a lot, and and I'm very interested in. Yeah. Um, because when you learn how to listen to music yeah. and, and how to understand what's being played as a musician it just it makes me nerd out so much when i'm listening to songs and someone does something that i think is interesting or that 
I wouldn't have thought to do. Um, and it honestly has made the experience of listening to music like much more pleasurable to me. Yeah. Uh, just objectively, like the joy that I derive from listening to music is so much better because I'm thinking of how it would be played as I listen to it. Sure, sure, sure. It's good. I mean, what? I mean, I think, I think as well. I think programming is programming uh, in general is is somehow a kind of art as well. I mean, it's such an, such a, if 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 one is is a good programmer, you know. So it's it's such a such a such an abstract art to bring bringing bringing numbers, uh, and and codes. Uh, in, in, into something what what is what is uh, artificial alive you know so, I mean it is, it is somehow amazing it, it, it is amazing and it is um, it is it is a new aesthetic actually huh? yeah yeah I I would definitely think of something that I compare a lot is like you know writing code is kind of like solving a puzzle. Uh, and making a system that works in, in of itself. And I think composing a song uh, could really be the same kind of idea, or I think of it in the same way, where you have Absolutely. different pieces of harmony that you have to put together uh, to make a, something that's a, a functioning, breathing whole, in a way. Abs no, I agree totally. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, What I would say, because because Matt, Matt just just told me today that 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 he is a little more in a hurry, and uh, and uh, I would say so. So we're gonna do this time or somehow shorter shorter episodes, and and uh, we 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 gonna just we we can jump already in in, in the first uh, song of of Big Sip, I would say. It is uh, fruits of life, and that's the song where we where we just uh, used to talk at the beginning of it. And um, I would say let, let's listen to this this great great song, and we dear listeners hear us in a couple of minutes again. Fruits of life with the big sip. Yes.
what everybody on this planet should do now is to try to find out how they can be. They can forget the word life. It never existed anyway, you see. And they can also forget about death, too, because it only exists because of life, you see. So then you have to rise up above life, because you can walk out in the street and look at the products of life. When you walk down Skid Row, you see the fruits of life. And when you see a person dying, you also see the fruits of life. So therefore, this word life is very strange indeed. Because it's not really life. It's something like dream. It's something that came to be temporarily. It should never have been. It's a product of people's actions or what they did. It's like karma, you see. People kept on doing things back in the past that were not pleasing to other beings. And finally, they turned around and made it a law on this planet for you to be bad and not to be good. And it came a time when it was against the law to be righteous and against the law to be good. You live in that time now. And it came a time where the creator of the universe said that only those who are wicked can be saved. Yes, that was Fruit of Life from the Big Sip. I really love this song, and I, and I mentioned it already before. I mean, I, I would say that that's, this song is very unique, and uh, and uh, I wish you guys with this song really all the best because I could imagine that. I feel, I, I've got the feeling. I mean, I mean, I had as well. I had the feeling, for instance, as Radiohead was very unknown, you know, so and as I just band this comes into the top, so I was right. You know. uh, yeah, hopefully our audience and our Irish audience will expand from this uh, this podcast. Maybe we'll we'll have to tour there sometime. That would be great. Uh, I, I mean, I, I hope I get, I'm getting invited to the backstage party, Matt. You know. <laughs> of course, of course. <laughs> uh, that, that's quite cool. Thank you very much for that. Uh, um, I would say so. Um, do, do you have anything to add for this first part? Yeah, just thanks for for checking out our our band, and you know we're so excited for people to be listening to our new album. We're we're very proud of it, and um, you know I hope you like it. I hope you, you can be proud of it for sure. Mm -hmm. so. so so um so social media like what is your um, do you have an Instagram one? Yes, uh, it's called the Big Sipstagram. The Big Sipstagram. Yes. All it's right. So you, you send me the links and, and 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 any other links what you want to put me into the description and I put it onto the podcast into the podcast website as well. The Big Sipstagram. Okay. Cool. Um, at the end, I just have to mention as well. So. Um, Matt is now as well part of um, member of the Hall of Attitudes, Matt, because the hall, and and you 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 as well your quantify your your profile will be on on my Mac my Hall of Attitude Mac because I, I, what I gonna do is I gonna do with, with every every podcast I gonna do a, a three part special edition Mac. With, uh, where I'm gonna set up collage and and, and that. that's 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 my little fun thing you know so that I try to combine combine the podcast as well with, with with art and and somehow with merchandising like you can see in the background it's one of my t-shirts I call it the merchandising hell 
and people can can look. They can find it on attitude.com. So they will find your your max as well on attitude.com. For now, for your entire life, you are on a Mac. And if people want to have a fancy coffee or tea with you, they can just sip the big sip. They can have the big sip. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. I'll have to order one. <laughs> yeah, so, so, uh, certainly. Uh, that's actually fun. I just the big sip. That's really good. so. Hall of Attitudes, Matt Dina, dear listeners, attitude.com. Or uh, at Instagram at that schlich or at attitude or at I love West Cork artists. And everyone is as well more than welcome to join this I love West Cork artists group. Dear listeners, that was for, for the first episode. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we will hear us all in the second part. Bye bye. Bye. You have listened to Art Jude. West Cork's first art, fashion and design podcast. Artitude, never so close again. Ah! That was too close.